Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'm discussing the 2007 science fiction action movie Transformers as directed by Michael Bay and as based on the popular Hasbro toy franchise of the same name. The movie marks the best time that the Transformers have been in a live action setting and indeed it was an outing that sparked a movie franchise all of its own with a further six sequels following this initial instalment and more, most certainly, in the pipeline. Following devastation caused by civil war on their own world, Cybertron, a race of cyber-robotic beings who have the ability to transform into all manner of technological and mechanical objects known as Transformers, as a result, look to Earth for the answer in the form of an ancient power known as the Allspark a cube-like object that created all life on Cybertron that was lost on Earth many thousands of years ago. Two warring factions, the Decepticons, who are looking to use the Allspark to take over their home planet, and the Autobots, who are looking to use it to rebuild their home world, have brought the fight to Earth in search of the cube. Caught in the middle is unsuspecting teen Sam Wick Wicky, as played by Shirley Booth, who may just hold the key to the Allsparks location. Only, he's looking to auction off the said map, unknowingly etched into a pair of his great-grandfather's glasses, on eBay, in order to kind of finance his first car. Leading to a frantic search and a few surprises along the way, as Sam suddenly comes to realise that his new, old, 1976 Chevrolet Camryo uh, may be more than just kind of meets the eye. With both the Autobots and the Decepticons locked in a deadly race to find the Allspark, it's Earth that gets caught right in the crosshairs, and it's a, certainly a fight nobody saw coming. It is going to take everything we've got and all of the Autobots' might to ensure the Allspark does not fall into the Decepticons' hands, leading to utter devastation for both of our worlds. So, Transformers, what a rush! Um, bringing Michael Bay's trademark bravado and booming direction to the world of Transformers themselves, with a particular style that I might add that while basically transporting, you know, transplanting a story involving the Transformers over his usual cocktail formula, manages to really bring something that sets out uh, to kind of wholly entertain and to capture, in my opinion, what the Transformers were really all about, or at least, shall I say, what they meant to me. I know that this might be a bit of a sore point for many who grew up with the original Transformers and certainly the original Transformers movie, but although I have always kind of loved the idea of such machines that could transform into other things such as cars, trucks and jets, and indeed the toys were and have always been pretty cool, you know, it's not something I have ever really been into. Um, so as a franchise, it's something that I don't really have kind of any affinity for in, in any kind of real direction. Um, I've got affection, um, but I've got it's not predisposed, you know. I like the idea, but and I would think that it, you know it probably does kind of help when it comes to this entry. So that do just bear that in mind, you know. I was and always have been more enamoured with the concept. I think you know the idea of the Transformers, and that's really what I kind of really think this film captures, and most certainly kind of bringing them up to date for a modern audience, whilst also giving them the crescendo and presence they deserve. The fact that we have these beings that can kind of transform in such a way is certainly an enticing idea. And I think that's what this movie explores and kind of brings to the table. Unlocking a number of possibilities and capturing the imagination of the toys themselves. Now, an unpopular opinion, but I, I don't mind Bay's direction here, you know. I know he can be an acquired taste to some, but I just love his form of booming and bombastic popcorn fodder. I think it very much suits the style and the presence that they were going for with the Transformers, and it really works a treat with the visual effects. The bold and posturing cinematography, quite simply the essence of what a blockbuster as such as this, you know, should actually be. Just watching the Paramount and the DreamWorks logos at the beginning of the movie just set against the sound they use for the Transformers transforming gets me revved up for what was, you know, we're about to watch and what's ahead. And that kind of first meeting that we have with all the Autobots together, as, as built up and grandiose as it is, always kind of does bring a little bit of a tear to my eye with such joy. 
it is a moment for sure, you know? I love its like comedic vibes, the, the kind of the teenage angst angles, almost, you know, sometimes verging on American Pie territory perhaps, but it is brilliantly fast paced when and when the action kicks in, it is fast, frantic, and albeit it can be that fast at points, it's hard to know just exactly who we should be rooting for. Shame there isn't some kind of like symbol or emblem that we could actually put and perhaps use to kind of tell them apart. Hmm. The Transformers designs are amazingly detailed and considering this is now what, at the time of this review, about 16 years old, um, still very much holds up. There's a couple of shaky CGI moments, but I didn't feel that this was with the Transformers rather than how the humans interact with them, you know, and the environment. But nothing of any great shakes that really deterred from my enjoyment. I also think it's pretty neat that the Transformers retain this kind of brilliant sense of their own being, you know. They aren't just machines or computers, but actual living organisms in their own right. Their own styles, their own sense of humour. Letting our language from the world wide web. Bumblebee being the ever hopeless romantic, knocking out the pop culture references. Even having his own moment with Herbie, you know. Barricade with his twisted version of the police motto, to punish and enslave. It is pretty creative in its own right and has this kind of total fun with the concept of the Transformers and can be totally hilarious at times, giving the Transformers life rendered in the most amazing detail and made to be so convincingly real. There are admittedly uh, more than a few plot holes here. Um, this doesn't stick together very well. Uh, in fact, more holes than a block of Swiss cheese. But in this instalment, I can forgive and forget that everything else is just so succinct, you know? Bay does skate on thin ice. You are left scratching your head on a number of topics, but don't get me wrong, you know, especially timelines, you know, as these kind of do seem to be a little bit all over the place. That or we never really do find out just how old the Transformers actually are. Probably would be quite rude to ask, right? Um, let's hope it's not a Decepticon. Um, but I think he manages to kind of get away with it here, you know, as as we do kind of swiftly move on to something else. He doesn't let us linger too much kind of glossing over the subject, you know, but still giving us something else in the next scene in return, you know, as payment for what we've just had to go through. One thing that does kind of grind on me a bit is, is the trouble that the Decepticons seem to go through in hacking the US defence systems, when simply, surely, you know, surely, all they have needed to do was create themselves an eBay account and have the glasses delivered, right? And again, I said you know, a few plot holes, I know there wouldn't have been much of a movie there, but you know, what do you do? Um, but once again, you know, like I said, a few plot holes. Um, but now that I've started, you know, having the end battle take place in the city, trashing down buildings um, like they were Lego, somebody's bright idea to take the all spark there for safety. Never mind the poor people that didn't even think to evacuate, but definitely creating a thrilling spectacle of a showdown nonetheless. And again, like I've said, easy to forgive and forget. But its overall delivery is, is very, very typical of Bay's direction, you know? Finally, the score, um, penned by Steve Jablonski, um, also fits the movie very well. And I must say that I do enjoy the bold and uncompromising Transformers theme that he came up with. Specifically when used for the Autobots, you know? It's rousing, commanding and full of presence. Fully assertive and building up, you know, this anticipation wonderfully as we do kind of move from the human story elements to going full-on Transformers. Overall, Transformers is a movie full of posturing and bravado, base style, uh, but so suited to its overall delivery in this particular case. This one's got that awe value. It's new, different, and still has a wonderfully fresh feel today. It's a brilliant way, in my opinion, to introduce the Transformers to a modern world, bringing a childhood fantasy to life in so much vivid detail and action that once it starts, feels heart-poundingly relentless. It's a perfect summer blockbuster, total popcorn fodder, and designed to entertain no less. It's a total crowd pleaser. It's exhilarating, you know, full of kind of refreshing, full of crescendo, showboating, with a true sense of spectacle and adventure. Lots of boom. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, Please do leave a like, please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you at Southface Movie Talk, definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye!